What's up, man? How you guys doing? How y'all doing out there? I hope you've been painting, doing your thing, getting loose on the walls, getting loose in the streets, getting loose in your sketchbook, whatever it is you like to do. Because remember, graffiti is whatever you want it to be. Art is whatever you want it to be. What was it that Hegel said? Art is the sensuous presentation of ideas. And that's what we're doing in these videos. You know what I'm saying? And uh, we're gonna talk a little bit about art today and um, quite a big piece of art, uh, a long rolling piece of art called Rick and Morty. Cause you guys been wanting me to do the Pickle Rick. Well, was it Pickle Rick initially? I got a lot of requests for Pickle Rick. So we're gonna do Pickle Rick and what is Rick and Morty but a sensuous presentation of ideas. Now, uh, before we get started, we need to deal with something. I always forget one. <laughs> we'll see if it happens in this video. So I've been kind of going through some of the episodes, watching some reaction videos. You know what, I've, I've been kind of familiar with the show for a while. Um, to be truthful, I never really followed it all that much. I was not, how do I say this? Like baby's first nihilism, you know what I mean? Nevertheless, um, I think the show is an important uh, cultural touchstone for us living in this country right now, and it's probably not the worst thing you could be watching. <laughs> Although Rick is kind of a jerk. <laughs> but the shows are good, you know, they, 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 they hit on like good cultural points, and I think that's really the key to having a good, funny, animated television show, is you gotta have like good, relatable, pop culture little points inside of there so the average person can watch it. But then at the same time, there's like these deeper philosophical meanings going on in the show, you know, and the whole, you know, a whole idea of that, you know, you're just a speck on the universe, you know, in, a, in the whole greater scheme of things, you're not really a whole lot. It's good to think about that, but remember, even though life doesn't have a pre-described meaning, you can give your life meaning. You give your life meaning. Nevertheless, interesting show, very interesting show. Rick's a cool guy. Although he's no, he's no Xavier Renegade Angel, that's for sure. <laughs> I'm just kidding guys, I'm just kidding, poking a little fun. But anyways, so let's get started on this video today. I got some really great colors set up, and let's go take a look at them over here. Let's see what we got, and we can talk a little bit about what we're going to do, and uh, let's do some art. All right guys, we got a nice little assortment of flame colors here. It looks like we got some uh, piglet pink, uh, light blue light, Riviera sapphire blue, fluorescent pink, ruby red, uh, cadmium yellow, fur green, apricot, telemagenta, moss green, leaf green, currant, Riviera again, uh, deep black in the signal white. Uh, I also brought some level fours, I believe. Yeah, level four caps and some uh, jiffy caps as well too. Uh, you know, this is a nice little assortment. I'm not sure exactly what I'm going to be using. Definitely, definitely will be using these greens for Rick, but everything else is kind of up in the air. But I like to have a light, little assortment and we can see what we can do with that. Um, but I think it'll be a lot of fun. Now, a lot of you have been asking me to do a flame blue video for a while, so that's why I brought them all out. It's been a while that we've done an exclusive flame blue video. And I think, uh, I think y'all would really appreciate that. You know, these cans, <clears throat> you know, it's kind of an interesting thing because they're made in Europe, but they're, they're, they're priced around the same, pretty close to the stuff made in Asia, you know? So you're getting a good value for your paint. And it's, uh, you know, very high coverage, except it's very low odor at the same time. And um, the color palette is really, really tuned for doing pieces, uh, very colorful pieces and stuff like that. So if you like to do colorful graffiti art, definitely check this out. In fact, if you go check out uh, Poisonism on Instagram, Poisonism, my dude Poisonism, what's up, Poison? This guy uses almost exclusively flame blue products, and he is a very talented artist. His letters are amazing, and his stuff is colorful, bold, bright, very, very beautiful, and I think it's a perfect example of what you can do with these colors. I gotta go to Greece, man. I gotta go to Greece. What do you guys think? Should we go to Greece? I think we need to go to Greece. Maybe next summer. We'll see what the schedule looks like. Um, anyways, so anyways, let's, let's start pulling some colors together, but you know what, before we get started, Let's roll out this wall. We've never rolled out a wall in one of our videos before. Well, I do it off camera usually, but let's talk about it today. All right, let's go ahead and open up this can. My roller already has some paint on it, and I'm not sure if it's gonna be compatible with what's in this can, you know what I'm saying? They might not mix well. So I brought an extra roller pad just in case. I think they will though. Let's take a look here. Ooh, it's a nice shade of gray. Now, 
In most municipalities, they have, oh, there's a roller in there. Whoa, there's two rollers in there. Most municipalities have some form of paint recycling or, uh, you know, free paint to cover graffiti. Hint, hint, free paint to cover graffiti. So if you go ask them for paint, they'll usually give you free gallons of paint that you can use um, to cover graffiti. <laughs> Uh, you could also check out places like Home Depot. They usually have Oops paint for pretty cheap. You shouldn't have to spend a whole lot on your latex to cover your graffiti. <laughs> it's pretty cheap. Um, so don't go buy new, new gallons. Look for the Oops paint or check out your local municipality. They probably got what you need in there. All right, so I got this really nice shade of gray here. It's like a blue gray, a cool gray, if you will. The roller has white in it, white and uh, hopefully they mix together well. We'll see. If not, I got the other roller over there. Ooh, ooh maybe it's all dried out. Eh, kind of dry, but I think we can run with it. I like to live dangerously. <laughs> all right, let's go ahead and uh, stick this roller in here. Let's see how it looks. Ooh, yeah, you know what? This pad is hard. Good thing I brought the other one. Get out of here. <laughs> Ooh, nice fluffy roller. Like a baby lamb. <clears throat> All right, let's go ahead. Get this roller nice and going here. We'll go ahead and get it loaded up with paint. Now you're ready. Oh yeah, now that's what I call a roller. Look at that. Much better. All right guys, the key to getting a good even roller fill is you're gonna wanna go ahead, start laying your lines down like that. Bye bye, Willie. So go ahead and lay down your lines. So let's say you got it all rolled out. Now do horizontally. Most people just do vertical, but if you want a nice even fill, that's what they say you're supposed to do. So let me go ahead and get this rolled out. We'll get to the next step. All right, so we got the wall rolled out. It's not perfect, but I only had a little bit of paint. I was running out of paint. And the key is to just cover the main part of the wall so you have a nice clean surface to work with. Now, paint drying does vary on the temperature. It's nice and warm out today, finally. So the wall is it's fairly dry to the touch already, which is thankful. In the winter time, it takes a long time for your latex to dry. And if you hit it while it's too wet, it will eat your paint. But I think it's fine now. I forgot about the silly streak. Oh yeah, very beautiful. That's one thing about the blues. They do do the silly string, although it, it gets out pretty quickly and it doesn't really leave the clog cans too much. So that's nice. So let's go ahead and start sketching out our rip. We went ahead and got our fill done, and just the basic bones of the piece, if you will. I think it looks pretty good. We got it all laid out, and we're ready to start adding some doodads and stuff in here. And I got some light blue light, which I thought it would look really nice. Let's uh, let's just kind of add it in really quick and see what it looks like. Oh yeah. It's very light, and I would say it's very close to the tone of my fill color. So I think I might want to rock a few darker shades as well, just to kind of offset the lightness of it. But we'll still use it. It's a nice shade. All right, so let me go lay these in. We'll see you at the next All right, day. guys, that's looking really nice. It laid down real smooth and even. Very, very nice light blue. So now we have some uh, sapphire blue. So it's a much darker shade. 
Uh, I think I'm gonna do some more angular shapes in here. I think it'll look really nice. What do you guys think? Let's do that. Let's go ahead and do that. All right, this is starting to get a real, uh, real Cosby sweater vibe to it. <laughs> oh man, what a screwed up story if that guy. Anyways, I got some uh, apricot right here. One of my favorite colors in this line. I think I'm gonna do my little center line and a few other doodads with it. So let's go ahead and do this here. You know I love doing these. All right guys, we got some basic fill stuff in. and You know, I might just leave the fill at that. Kind of keep it minimal. Minimal, right? <laughs> but you know, it's a lot of fun. I've had, I'm getting to use some letters I don't use that much. Although we used that C in the last one. And this is a variation of it, if you can't tell. Uh, just a little bit more funky, a little bit more chunked out, if you will, to give it a little bit more depth. Um, <clears throat> but anyways, I'm starting to feel a little bit hungry. Now, if only I had a snack that would suit this moment right now. Perfect! Better get your hands off my Szechuan sauce. Mmm. 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 Just kidding, it's barbecue sauce. I'm more of a barbecue sauce kind of guy. Maybe that's where we part paths on the Rick and Morty thing. I like the smoky, the smoky flavor of the barbecue. Although the tangy sweetness of the Szechuan is quite good. But that whole Szechuan ordeal was, it was, it was frustrating to watch. Let's just say that. I want Szechuan sauce. Where's my Szechuan sauce? I'm Kendall Rick. What below the dump dump? I'm Kendall Rick. Rick, 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 I'm Kendall Rick, Rick. What the heck? <laughs> it's a little something I like to call the Reddit effect. <laughs> Anyways, let's go ahead and get started on this. I got a nice basic fill. I think I'm gonna leave it as is. Um, why don't we go ahead and start chopping in our outline? You know, maybe we'll add more to the fill. I don't know. We'll see what happens. But let's just start working on the outline, working on our splash. And then we'll get to the Rick, because everyone wants to see Pickle Rick. That's what you want to see. I got, I got more requests for Pickle Rick than any character. Can you believe that? It's true. So let's get cracking. What's up, guys? I got some deep black. So we're going to go ahead and start chopping in our outline. And once we're done with that, I'll start blocking in my 3D basic parts. And remember, we're doing a drop down 3D. Or did I not mention that? We're doing a drop down 3D, like we did before. and. Uh, We'll see if I miss something this time. I always seem to miss one. But thankfully, I have the power of YouTube. Thankfully, you guys will point them out for me. <laughs> All right, let's get cracking. All right, dope. We went ahead and got our outline in. Now let's go ahead and start filling in all the negative space areas. So that way, once you got the negative space filled, then you can start with your 3D. You feel me? All right, let's get cracking. All right, in this video, what we're gonna be featuring is what I like to call fat 3D, basically. Just really fat 3Ds. And so we're gonna use the same technique that we used in the uh, what was that? And we're gonna use the same technique we used in the uh, in the scoper piece by using vertical lines to create our 3D. Except I'm gonna make them twice as big, double the size, um, like double the size fries, right? So let's just go ahead and start doing our lines downwards. Start chopping in the 3D like this. And remember, if it doesn't come out perfect right now, no big deal, you can clean it up later, okay? So just kind of follow along.
All right, so we got our big 3D in. I haven't filled it all in yet because, well, I forgot a can of black. I was supposed to have two cans of black, but I brought one. So I have to run back to the warehouse and get another one. So we'll leave this step till later. We'll fill it in and then we got all this beautiful real estate in here. So maybe we'll do some real fat 3D shines in there too. I think it'll look really, really good. Uh, but in the meantime, while this is on the marination station, let's go ahead and start laying in our splash. And I'm gonna be using, okay, read it, ruby red, sorry about that. <laughs> now, when you're choosing your splash color, you know, I've had some people hitting me up because they have trouble picking out colors and whatnot. This is, this is one of those moments where it's very easy. Just consult a color wheel. Um, I'll put one up on the screen right now for you guys to see. Now, color wheels are very helpful for picking out your colors. Now, the range of the color wheel isn't gonna be quite the same as like a range of Molotov colors or, or the flame colors, but at least you can see where the colors sit on the wheel. And what you wanna do to create contrast is to use contrasting colors. So, you know, I have some nice cool colors in here. You know, the, the turquoise, oh, Riviera, I'm sorry. I got the Riviera and the Sapphire, and then I contrasted it with the apricot. You see that? There's a contrasting color in here. Now. The apricot is not a dominating color. The dominating colors are the light blue, the sapphire, and the Riviera. So, to contrast those dominating colors, we use the red. Contrast nicely. Now remember, when you're laying in your splash, don't feel like you gotta butt up right against your outline color. Cause remember, you gotta do your outer outer as well too. Or actually you don't. What if you just wanna splash with no outer outer? That's a good question. You can do that too if you want. But I think we'll do an outer outer. You guys wanna see an outer outer? I think you do. Yeah, we'll do that. All right. Wow, this ruby red is so vibrant. Did you notice that? Oh my goodness. It's like that old fire truck color. Let me go get my mask. All right guys, when I'm filling in large areas, I prefer to wear a mask. If I'm just doing little chintzy lines, it's fine. But once you start really putting it down, you will start creating a lot of dust. So wear a mask when filling in particular. If you're using American paint like Krylon and Rust-Oleum, I would recommend wearing a mask at all times. So anyways, let's go ahead and get filling. Oh, by the way, I'm using the stock cap that comes in the flame can. It's the gray hood with the blue dots. All right, it's starting to look really good here. We got our 3D, we got our splash in. We got more work to do, but like I said, we got to get that black back. So that'll probably have to wait till tomorrow. No worries. I kind of like to break these videos up. In the meantime, we got some empty wall space over there. So let's see, let's see here, let's see. What should we do? Hmm. <laughs> Have you ever seen the Pickle Rick in, uh, oh, I forget this guy, is that Larry the Cucumber or whatever? It's, uh, it's dark, it's dark. <laughs> oh, now there's a nice look. <laughs> I think that's the top of my list so far. That's gonna be the, the Dabin, the Dabin Pickle Rick is pretty good. Um, hmm. Should I do a regular Pickle Rick? Ah, I, I kind of like the Dabbin one. I think we're going to have to do the Dabbin Pickle Rick. It's pretty good. <laughs> kind of like how I... <laughs> kind of like how I dab on graffiti sometimes, you know? You just got to do it. <laughs> Alright, I, uh, I got some fur green right here. I got some fur green. Alright, so the head is going to be right here that this is a great character to do because it's very simple 
So that's that's awesome. All right, so he's got that little thing there. He's got his eye right there. He's got an eye right there. He's got the nose that goes down like that. He's got this little business right there. And then he's like, like that. Some teeth, weird ass tongue. Just go ahead and start chopping this in here. Now this is a meme, so it looks pretty, uh, it's pretty crude. You know what I'm saying? It's drawn in a crude fashion, which is perfect for me. We're just gonna lace it in real basic right now. I'll step back and look at it in a second and see how it looks. Alright, let's go ahead and start lacing in his shirt. I got more of that sapphire blue and a jiffy cap. I think you guys want to see how the jiffy cap is on the flame blue. So let's take a look at it real quick here. It's like a... It's an interesting cap. It's like... I would call it like a fat outline cap on the flame blue. That's what I would call it. Very sharp lines though. You could probably fill in with it. Let's try it out. It's a nice little filling cap too. It really puts out the paint, you know what I'm saying? It's comfy too. It's got a nice comfortable pad on it. You see that? See right there? Very comfy cap. Cozy if you will. Alright, that's looking good. Let's start filling it in. All right, let's go ahead and start putting the highlight of the face in. Got this leaf green here. You know, this cap actually isn't the best for details. Let's go back to the stock tip. It just puts out a little too hard on this paint. It may work different on other cans. Remember, a cap doesn't always work the same on every can. It could be different on a Molotov, it could be different on a flame, it could be different on an iron lac. You know what I'm saying? So let's get back on this. Much softer. Yeah, I'd say that Jiffy cap would be a good outline cap and a good filling cap. Probably not the best detail for the flame. All right, we got some pure white right here. By far, one of our favorite whites of all the whites we carry at Art Primo is the Flame Blue Signal White, or I'm sorry, Pure White. Excuse me. It's pure. Rick isn't very pure, that's for sure. <laughs> Hey guys, we're back again. It's the next day and uh, the weather's looking pretty good, but it's been raining off and on. So hopefully we'll be able to get this video finished in one swoop today. Uh, but you know, it's springtime here in Seattle. And as the old saying goes, if you don't like the weather, wait five minutes. So we'll see. Uh, but I'm going to try and get finished. So we'll see what happens. Uh, anyways, so where did we leave off? Rick, he's looking pretty good, isn't he? Yeah, I think he looks great. Uh, let's, a couple thoughts. 
you know, I think this gray might be a little too dark, but you know what? Sometimes you just gotta use what you have. So I think we're just gonna work with that, leave him as is, and just move on to the next step. So we have the piece to finish. We have to do a halo. We have to do 3D shines. And I guess shines, and then we can just be done with it as is. Maybe we'll put some doodads in the background or something like that. We'll see how we feel. Uh, but anyways, I did forget my speaker today, so we won't have any funky tunes, so I apologize about that. But we'll soldier on through anyways. So why don't we go ahead and start lacing in that halo. fantastic yellow. This is the cadmium yellow in the flame blue line and it's a flame video and I gotta tell you it's probably one of my favorite yellows so far. Goes on even, very smooth coverage, very bright too as cadmium yellows often are. So let's get cracking. All right let's talk about cutbacks again. Now a young writer had sent me a uh, an Instagram post by a fairly famous old school writer. Basically, the, the premise of the meme, it was a meme that he did, it was like his son and his dad walking along the beach. And um, <clears throat> something to the effect where the kid asked the dad, like, oh dad, why don't you use cutbacks? You know? <laughs> and the dad was like, well son, it's because I'm not a toy. <laughs> it's funny, it is funny. Um, but the funny thing is, I see everyone using cutbacks, even famous writers, because it's a necessary tool that you need to use to make your piece really pop. Now, there's a difference between doing some cutbacks and depending on cutbacks. And you can really see the difference when people do this. Um, if the inner line of their piece looks really choppy, or if they can't paint a line more than 12 inches cleanly, chances are they're depending on cutbacks to keep their piece looking nice and sharp. Now, I'm not gonna call that person a toy because we all start from somewhere. You know, but there are people who have been painting for years that still depend on that kind of technique. So what I would say is, yes, cutbacks are useful. Cutbacks are a necessary evil. <laughs> they're not really evil but they're a necessary tool. So let's go ahead and do a few. Look at this line right here. Look how it's fat here and skinny right there. So what I'm gonna have to do is cut it back with the black and redo the yellow right there. Bad form, Green Ranger, bad form. So let that set and we'll hit that with the yellow again. A little cut back right there. A little cut back right there. I guess that's all I really need to do. I just had that one line there. So let's let that paint dry. Oh, I just hit it with my finger. Let's let that dry and then we'll hit it with the yellow. Move on to the next step. We are at the stage right now where we're gonna go ahead and start lacing in our 3D shines. I got this can here of Current. Now Current is by far one of my favorite purples. It's also available in the Molotov line. And um, if you're a Lakers fan, I'd say it's a perfect match for that Lakers purple. So if you're doing some Lakers artwork, look no further. If you want the yellow to match, well, no, I wouldn't use the cadmium, actually. I would use golden yellow from the Molotov line. Golden yellow. Now, that is a Lakers yellow right there. But anyways, let's go ahead and start lacing this in. When you're doing your 3D highlight, you could use a lighter color or a darker color. It doesn't really matter. This is a darker shade, but it should pop off the black pretty nicely. Let's take a look here. Woo, that looks really nice. All right, it's looking pretty good, guys. I'm. I'm rather happy with it myself. I think the purple highlights look really nice, really accent the black really well. And uh, I think it's high time 
we put some shines on it. So I got some of this pure white in the flame. So let's get cracking. Also, I'm using the stock tip that comes on the can. It is the blue dot with the gray hood. Not the white hood with the blue dot, but the gray hood with the blue dot. Nice cap. Soft spray, as expected. <clears throat> what? All right, guys, I think it came out really good, man. We got Rick over here doing his thing, kind of being the symbolism of his uh, substance abuse problem, I guess you could say, and a few other things. Uh, but we got great colors, we got great, um, great color spectrum, if you will. Nice little piece in there, and I think uh, I think we did a good job. And I'm I'm looking forward to doing the closeout on this video because that way we can get together and talk a little bit about the colors that we use in this video. I'm very happy with it. I hope you enjoyed watching. So let's go back to the office and talk about these wonderful colors that we used. Oh, hello there. You know, some people may call us simple burgers, but we export everything that is cool. Well, except for spray paint, but we'll work on that. Speaking of cool, let's close out this video this Pickle Rick video. It is a cool show, I admit it. Been starting to watch it. It's kinda good. It's a new season coming up. And I'm looking forward to it. So let's go check out these cans. All right guys, that was a lot of fun. We got a chance to stretch our legs, try out some of the blue again, put it through its paces in its own special video to see what it's all about. And uh, I gotta tell you, I'm rather fond of it. You know, I've been using it off and on over the years. and. You know, it stacks up highly with all of the other European paints. And uh, it's very thick. The color palette's very broad. I will say this though, the color palette is weighted more for like bright poppy colors. Like in comparison for like, you know, like Montana 94 for example. It has a lot of pastel shades, a lot of skin tones and whatnot. This line, it's more bright reds, bright blues, bright purples, bright greens. So if you're doing pieces and stuff, this is an excellent paint to use for that. If you want to do photorealism, characters, stuff like that, I would say more Montana Gold or Molotov would be a better choice for you. <clears throat> that, that's not to say there isn't skin tones in the line. It's just not as, it's just not as broad as the other brands. But when you come to pop colors, gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. Now it is an acrylic paint, so it comes out very thick feeling. Um, I would say it feels very similar to the Montana 94 and how it sprays, how it looks, how it lays down on the wall. But again, I always felt the 94 was more weighted in the pastel shades. This, much more poppy, much more poppy. It still does the silly string at the end, which is kind of annoying, although it has is yet to give me a bad valve or a valve leak or a valve clog or anything of that nature. I haven't had any issues with the valves. That was an issue with some, other, with some other cans that did the Silly String back in the day. The original flame, the reds, sometimes you'd get a bad valve. And it wasn't because the valve itself was bad, it was because the resin clogged it. And that can be frustrating. Uh, you know, it can happen with any paint though, but I'll have to tell you I've yet to experience a noticeable problem with these. So, kudos to them. Although if they were able to engineer that out, it would make it a little bit easier to get the can started. But if it changed the formula, in a way I wouldn't like, I would prefer to keep the Silly String because I think the formula in the can is magnifique. Cap compatibility. Now this is compatible with all dot caps, any of those type of caps you can use it with. Um, kind of interesting though, I didn't particularly care for the Jiffy Cap on this can, but I do like the Jiffy Cap on other cans. I love it on the Iron Mic. It's such a great cap in the lack. And I love it on the Flame Orange too, and the Molotov. But I think it kind of changed the output of the can a bit. It just wasn't, didn't have that feel that it had before. Now these cans do come with two different stock tips. As I know of now, there might be another one, I don't know. Things change, the world changes. You're just a speck on the universe, right? <laughs> uh, right now there 
are two caps that I've seen here. They're both blue dots. One is more like the German Outline 3 style, and the other is more like a dot style cap with a gray hood. They're both rather soft. Um, they're both kind of fat for a stock tip, but you have to understand that these aren't really stock tips. These are fancy graffiti caps, and they also have to function as a normal cap for the everyday crafter type person. So it needs to be a jack of all trades, but a master of none. So it is soft and easy to use, but it's still gonna be a little too fat for detail work. So if you need a detail cap, uh, I would look at the Molotov Super Skinny. It's a beautiful cap. Uh, the gray dots, gold dots, um, the banana, skinny banana. A lot of people like those caps. Me personally, not my favorite. Odd man out on that one, because most people love them. But that's what's really cool about reviews, is everyone gets to state their opinion. Um, <clears throat> but I will say this, I've been using these over the years. I have been testing them on freight trains, and they hold up with the best of them. They do quite well. And uh, I think you will be very, very happy with them. One thing I would like to note is the black and the white are awesome. If you're looking for a thick white, look no further. The black is great. I would say it's just as good as the Molotov black. It feels a little thicker, but it's just because of the acrylic formula. It's just in a perceived thickness, if you know what I mean. Um, a great paint. Anyways, before we get going, I wanted to mention a few things, because uh, some youngins were asking me about how they can kind of develop their style, and we don't sell these, but I like to be, you know, given love where it's deserved. And if you go on Amazon, check out these Black Book Sessions books. We used to sell them. We used to. But it's just not profitable to do that anymore. Amazon kind of took over all of that. But j definitely check it out. Black Book Sessions books by Style File. These are great reads. Well, not really a read, but just lots of outlines. So you can bite a little bit. I won't tell anybody, okay? I won't tell anybody. Also, the Cacao 77 book. Um, this is by far one of the best graffiti books you'll ever find. Amazing work. This guy is a true artist. Oh look, a Dr. Gut sticker in there. <laughs> I guess I guess I was saving that page for something. And of course, the classic Subway art book. There's also another one called Spray Can Art, and that's actually the first book I ever looked at graffiti-wise. Because, you know, when I was a kid, we didn't have the internet. We had B. Dalton Bookstore. And you go to the art section, they had this book, and they had Spray Can Art. And that was only piece of media. That was the only piece of media we had to look at graffiti. And uh, they're both great books. Highly recommend Spray Can Art if you find it. It's got, I think it has a Chrome Angels character on the cover. Amazing. But this subway art is our roots. So pick them up, add them to your library, look through them, find a style that you like, bite it. Yes, bite it. But make it your own. Anyways, I gotta get going guys. We gotta close out this video. Uh, I just want to say thank you for watching. Uh, I want to say thank you. We're almost at 100,000 subscribers now, which is awesome. We're on our way. Um, I couldn't have done it without you guys. Really couldn't. And uh, I just want to say thank you. And remember, if you need graph supplies, holler at your boy. Artprimo.com. That's correct. Artprimo.com. We the coolest cats on the block. All right, guys. I'll see you later. Peace.